hello welcome back to my channel so as you can tell from the title today we are covering carbon monoxide poisoning when traveling internationally um, as you all are aware there have been some recent deaths um, be because of carbon monoxide poisoning with international travelers and so uh, definitely something that we should be aware of we should know the signs and symptoms, things to watch for, what to do if we experience those symptoms. And that's what we are gonna cover today. I am at the moment traveling. I'm in beautiful Nairobi, Kenya, and I did bring along my carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide detector with me on this trip. Uh, it's something that I personally have been aware of, but with the recent things that have been going on lately, I was definitely more compelled to go ahead and take action and get me a carbon monoxide detector to use when traveling. Um, but before we get into that, let me introduce myself. My name is Nicole and my background is in family nursing. I, I'm a family nurse practitioner and on this channel I help black women to create the life that they desire to live rather than the one that was assigned to them. Uh, I cover things related to health, wellness, and medical tourism and things related to uh, international travel for us as black women in particular. So if that is something that you're interested in, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the like button so I can provide you with more content in that area. So getting back on the subject matter for today, we're gonna talk about carbon monoxide poisoning. What is it? Carbon monoxide, and I am gonna be looking at my notes. So carbon monoxide is a colorless, tasteless odorless gas um, that is produced from basically burning fuel uh, to be honest is something that we are exposed to on a very regular basis but generally speaking we're exposed to it at low levels um, and especially being in the US there are ways that we are normally mitigating our risk um, for carbon monoxide however one thing that we should know is that carbon monoxide poisoning is, poisoning is not something that is new. Uh, it is something that happens every um, every year in the United States. There are at least about 500 deaths that result from carbon monoxide poisoning. And there are um, thousands of ER admissions that are resulting from carbon monoxide poisoning as well. So it's not something that's new. Um, seasonally, carbon monoxide does tend to increase in the winter months, and that's because of the need for heating. Uh, oftentimes, carbon monoxide, like I said, because it results from burning gas or burning fuel, then in the winter months in particular, or when heating is needed, then there's going to be an increase for exposure to carbon monoxide. Um, and the issue is when there's carbon monoxide um, being emitted, if it's highly concentrated in an area that is not well ventilated, that's when you are going to potentially develop signs and symptoms from carbon monoxide poisoning. So let's talk a little bit about um, the things that kind of increase our risk of carbon monoxide poisoning or the different elements that are associated with it. So carbon monoxide is emitted from fireplaces space heaters, car mufflers, charcoal grills, car engines, portable generators, um, some other elements that emit carbon monoxide include malfunctioning cooking appliances, malfunctioning water heaters, um, those types of things. And the challenge when you're traveling internationally is that you're gonna be out of your you know, normal accommodation so it is important to be aware of what elements are being used to heat your accommodation if you can and also where your sleeping where your sleeping area is in relation to what's being used to heat your surroundings so those are definitely things to begin to look into uh, in order to reduce the likelihood that you will be exposed to carbon monoxide um, the highest risk is of course if you spend a lot of time next to fireplaces next to a gas stove especially a malfunctioning 
uh, cooking appliance or a heater or furnace. And so if you are staying somewhere, say, let's say you're staying with family or you're staying um, in a bed and breakfast or somewhere, it's good to kind of be aware of where your room is in relation to whatever heating element they are using uh, for that particular area. Generators are not something that we use uh, on a regular basis to heat our homes in the United States of America. So that's something that we um, as travelers may not even be as familiar with. But as an international traveler, um, it's very common for people to use generators to heat their space and for electricity in general, sorry, for electricity in general. So it's good to inquire if you're gonna be staying with family or with relatives where, where they keep the generator and to be aware of um, where the fumes from that, a generator, from that generator are being emitted. Because if the fumes are being emitted to the areas where you're going to be staying or sleeping or residing, then certainly you're gonna be at an increased risk for developing carbon monoxide poisoning. So let's talk about the signs of carbon monoxide. The signs, unfortunately, for carbon monoxide poisoning are very vague. Um, they include headaches, dizziness, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. And they're oftentimes um, misdiagnosed for something such as flu. So if you are in a particular area while you're traveling and you develop a sudden onset of these symptoms, immediately seek help. Don't lay down, don't go to sleep, um, get out of that surrounding. And one thing is that if you get out of that surrounding and suddenly you feel better, that is a good indicator that there is potential for carbon monoxide in your space. Um, so immediately, if you experience those while you're traveling, get out, get fresh air, call the local emergency services. And so that's why also when you're traveling, it's good to know how to call for uh, local emergency services or how to connect with who can help you if you do experience a medical emergency. Um, never, never, never lay down and go to sleep if you're starting to feel ill. One of the things that I would also suggest in terms of what to do is start carrying a carbon monoxide detector with you when you travel. Um, prior to this trip, I decided to start looking for carbon monoxide detectors. I settled on this particular one. There were several available. Um, and I don't know that this will be my final choice, but this was definitely an option that was affordable, portable, fixed, fits in my handbag and I think it was less than $30 um, and very easy to use. I was not interested in anything that was complicated or anything that was, was going to require me to um, figure out a lot of the details in order for it to function. Also for me, I didn't really necessarily want a carbon monoxide detector that was so portable that I needed to carry it with me because for the most part I'm concerned about um, detecting it wherever I'm going to be sleeping so I was okay with having something that I can just sit down in my sleeping area and I don't have to carry it around with me all the time um, so in addition to being aware of what to look for I would say that it's also important to be able to ask for testing for carbon monoxide if you think you may have been exposed. Um, that's one thing that I would say is extremely important um, to advocate for yourself because we know that clinically in medicine, there's a good chance that your signs and symptoms are not necessarily gonna always point to carbon monoxide. Um, when you're out, especially when you're traveling, you could have eaten something and have similar symptoms. You have caught up, you could have caught the flu and have similar symptoms. But I would also say that it's important that if you experience those symptoms, specifically request to be tested for carbon monoxide. So that way, um, if you do have signs of that, you can be treated properly. And typically it's treated by giving you pure oxygen via an oxygen mask, or in more severe cases, you may need to, um, get into a hyperbaric chamber. But the symptoms can get pretty severe, pretty bad. Uh, and unfortunately, as we are aware of, um, in the most severe cases, lead to death. So that's what I have today on carbon monoxide poisoning as an international traveler. Uh, moral of the story, I think, is to be aware of your surroundings, 
where you're sleeping, where are the heating elements, reduce the likelihood that you're going to be exposed as much as is possible, and also um, try and carry a carbon monoxide detector with you when you go. Uh, try and keep your areas, your sleeping areas well ventilated as is permitted based on where you're staying and also um, being aware of the signs of symptoms and how to seek help, help when you need to. Um, so that is it for today's video. Uh, I will put a link below for the carbon monoxide detector that I have and uh, maybe a couple others that I looked into considering and um, hopefully this video was helpful um, and we can reduce the likelihood that we are going to suffer uh, adverse consequences when we're traveling. Um, so stay safe while traveling. I wish you all the best and I'll check in with you next time. Bye.